In this video, we will be looking at transformations of parabolas. And we already know that y equals x squared is the most basic parabola and is called our parent parabola. And you will notice it sketched on all of the grids already. So if we remember, we have the point 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. All the x values are being squared. And we have the same thing on the left side. Now, all of our transformations, we're going to be able to take them away from this vertex form. So the A value, the H, and the K value, they all mean something in terms of transformations, whether it's moving around on the grid or something is physically happening to the parabola where it's being stretched or squished or reflected, something like that. So we're going to use Desmos to investigate this. So part one, we're going to look at the K value. So x squared is already graphed for you and what I want you to do is go into Desmos and you're going to graph the other two parabolas. So you have x squared plus 6 and x squared minus 4. I want you to type those into Desmos and then sketch them on this grid roughly and then I want you to make your own observations. Once you've done that then come back to the video. So pause it and go to Desmos to fill this part in. So hopefully your y equals x squared plus 6 parabola is up here and your x squared minus 4 parabola is down here. So what we should have observed is that this original parabola has been shifted up 6 units or down 4 units for these two new parabolas. So that is what the k value does. And remember the k value is the value outside of the brackets if there are any. So it's outside that exponent of 2. So when k is greater than 0, so when it is positive, the parabola shifts up k units. And when k is less than 0, so when it is negative, the parabola shifts down k units. So let's try that out for these next two parabolas. We have x squared minus 11. So we're stating the transformations that are being applied to the parent parabola, and then we'll state the new vertex after. So this parabola here, we have minus 11, which means we should be shifting down. So we're going to write, for good communication, shift down, and not just 11, shift down 11 units. Now, if our parabola has been shifted down, our new vertex is 0, comma, negative 11. And this is in vertex form, so you should be able to see the vertex already. But now you also can visualize it because the original vertex was at 0, 0. It's not moving to the right or left at all, so x isn't being affected, it's just moving down 11. So your y coordinate will be affected. Let's go to the next one. We have x squared plus 3. It's positive 3, which means we're moving up. So shift up 3 units. And that makes our new vertex 0, comma, 3 because we're moving vertically up, so that affects your y-coordinate. So that's your k-value, up-down movement. Let's go to part 2. Part 2, we're looking at the h value, and the h value is inside the bracket with the x. So notice here we have x minus 3 all squared, x plus 6 all squared. The k value would be outside the bracket, which is what we just looked at. So I want you to pause the video again, go to Desmos, the parent parabola is already there for you, and I want you to sketch x minus 3 squared and x plus 6 squared, and then make some observations here, and then come back to the video. All right, so for your x minus 3 squared, you should have this parabola that has shifted to the right 3, and for x plus 6 squared, it has shifted to the left 6. So if you first look at these parabolas, you might think, oh, maybe it's moving to the left 3 and to the right 6, but it's actually the opposite. So I want you to remember that for your transformations. When it's subtract a number, you're actually moving to the right, and when you're adding a number, you're actually moving to the left. And the reason for that 
is because of the original vertex form. The original vertex form is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So let's say we make h equal 5. Then your bracket will look like x minus 5 squared. And a positive h value actually shows as subtracting in your bracket, but you're moving to the right 5. Now let's say h was negative 3. Then my bracket would be x minus negative 3 all squared, which simplifies to x plus 3. So when you see addition in the bracket, your h value is actually negative and you're moving to the left. So that's why it's the opposite of what you might logically think. So when h is greater than 0, the bracket actually shows subtraction and the parabola shifts right h units. And when h is less than zero, it's actually gonna show as x plus a number and the parabola shifts left h units. And I left a space here for you to write a little note for yourself. So maybe you wanna make a note that inside the bracket, it's the opposite direction. So opposite sign inside bracket or direction or write whatever makes sense to you this is your note your reminder that inside the brackets it's the opposite of what you might logically think and again that's because of the setup of vertex form so let's try some examples here we have y equals x minus 18 all squared it's inside the bracket so I know it's a right left movement. And because it says X minus 18, I'm actually gonna go to the right. So shift right 18 units. And please be very careful here with your communication. Use all the correct terminology. Don't just say right 18 units. You have to include shift and units. So that means our original vertex was at zero, zero. You're not moving up, down. So your Y coordinate isn't changing, but now your X coordinate is to the right 18. So that's why it's 18 comma zero. And now you should know that from vertex form, that's why we take the opposite sign because we're actually moving to the right. Okay, let's go to the next one. Y equals X plus nine all squared. Plus nine is gonna mean to the left nine. So shift left nine units and if i'm moving to the left nine i'm in the negatives that's why my vertex is negative nine comma zero now for this next one i have an h value in the brackets and a k value outside the brackets so i want you to try to state the two transformations here one is a right left movement in the bracket and one is up down so go ahead and pause the video try it out and then come back Okay, so the x minus 2, hopefully you said that you're shifting right 2 units. And the plus 8 outside the brackets is your up down. And you're shifting up 8 units because outside the brackets is regular logic. Now, if I'm shifting to the right 2 and up 8, that will make my vertex positive 2, positive 8. So hopefully... You got that and check your communication. Make sure you're using proper words here. All right, let's try our last value in vertex form and that is your A value. So I have Y equals X squared on the grid already for you. I want you to sketch these next three parabolas. So three X squared using Desmos, one half X squared and negative X squared. And then take a little note, make some observations, and then come back to the video. All right, so for y equals 3x squared, hopefully you had something like this. It looks like the parabola has been stretched upwards so it's thinner because you're taking those ends and pulling them upwards. Whereas for y equals 1 half x squared, it looks like the parabola has been squished down, flattened out, so we call that a compression. And then for y equals negative x squared, it has been reflected over that x-axis, so it's like a mirror image. 
So let's write down our conclusions with proper terminology. So when you look at the value of A, ignoring the positive or negative, that is called the absolute value of A. And we put these little lines, those sticks around the A. So that means the absolute value of A is greater than one. So when A, ignoring the negative, is greater than one, we say that the parabola is vertically stretched by a factor of the absolute value of A. And you have to state that factor. So for that previous one that we graphed through Desmos, it was vertically stretched by a factor of three. And then if the absolute value of A is less than one, so if it's between zero and one, the parabola is vertically compressed by a factor of the absolute value of A. So for that previous one, it was vertically compressed by a factor of one half. And finally, if the A is negative, it might also be stretched or compressed, but it is also reflected over the x-axis. And you have to mention that it's over the x-axis because there are transformations for a different letter, which is for grade 11, where there's a reflection over the y-axis. Just like why you have to state that it's vertically stretched or compressed because there are horizontal stretches and compressions as well. But that again is for grade 11. So let's try it out. We have y equals negative 4x squared. The negative tells me that there's a reflection. So reflection over x-axis. Now I ignore the negative and I just look at the 4. And that 4 is greater than 1, which means it must be stretched. So vertical stretch by a factor of 4, not negative 4. The negative told me the reflection. The 4 tells me the stretch. And now my new vertex, it hasn't moved right, left, up, down, so the vertex isn't moving. Just like in all the examples that we did on Desmos for the A value, that vertex always stayed at 0, 0 at the origin. Okay, let's try the next one. I see my A value is 1 half, and 1 half is less than 1, so that must mean it was compressed. So vertical compression... by a factor of one half. And then I see another number, but it's inside the bracket, which means it's the right left movement. And it says minus one, but we have to remember it actually means the right one. So shift right one unit. And now we can state our vertex. So we move to the right one, but we didn't move up down. So one comma zero. Or you could have seen your vertex as this. Add the plus zero at the end so that way you can see the h and k very clearly. And finally for the last one I see a negative for my a value which means it's reflected over the x-axis. And now the fact that we know that a negative value means a reflection now we know why our parabola opens down. It's because of this transformation. And then finally I have this negative 3. It is outside the bracket. It is past the exponent of 2. So that means it's your up-down movement. So I shift down 3 units. So that makes my vertex 0, comma, negative 3. Okay, so now that we know all of our transformations, so A is your vertical stretch compression or reflection, H is the right-left movement for the inside bracket number, and it's the opposite of what you might think. And K is your up-down movement, which is outside your bracket. Let's take that and practice the communication of our transformations. So I'm going to do some of them with you, and then I'll have you practice some on your own, and then come back to the video to check. So for this first one, I have y equals 1 half x minus 4 squared plus 9. The 1 half is your a value. It is less than 1, 
So it is a compression. Vertical compression. And you can't just see that. By a factor of a half. Then inside the bracket is my right left movement. And it says minus four. So I'm actually shifting right four units. And finally, the plus nine outside the brackets is your up down. So shift up nine units. So our vertex is positive four comma nine. Just knowing our regular vertex form. So there we go. Three transformations here. Let's try the next one. First, I have a negative. That tells me there's a reflection. Reflect over x-axis. Then there's a 2 as my a value. And I ignore the negative now. That 2 is greater than 1, so that means it's a vertical stretch. By a factor of 2. And then finally, this negative 12 is outside the bracket. It's past the exponent of 2, so it's your up-down. So you're shifting down 12 units. So our vertex, there's no right-left movement, so 0, because there's nothing here inside the brackets, and then negative 12. Okay, I'm going to do one more, and then I'll have you finish the rest on your own. So y equals 7 over 3, x plus 8 squared. You might see 7 over 3 and say, oh, it's a fraction, so it's a compression. But 7 over 3, if you plug it into your calculator, is 2.3333 repeated. And that is definitely greater than 1. So this is actually a vertical stretch. By a factor of 7 over 3. And then the x plus 8, that's inside the bracket, and it's plus 8, so we're actually shifting to the left. Which makes our vertex negative 8, and then 0 because you're not moving up or down. So, I want you to pause the video. I want you to try these next three examples on your own, and be very careful with proper communication because that is important for your communication marks, and just for your general knowledge. So pause the video and try it out, then come back. All right, so coming back, hopefully for this first one here, you had a vertical stretch by a factor of three, shift right five units, and shift up four units, which makes your vertex five comma four. Check your communication, see if you have all the right words to get full marks. Then, for this next one, we have a reflection over the x-axis, a vertical compression by a factor of two-thirds, shift to right one unit, and down six units. So that makes our vertex one negative six. And then finally, we have a reflection over the x-axis here, and we don't have a value other than one, so you don't have to say that one is a stretch or compression because it's nothing. And then shift left 7 units and shift up 11 units, making our vertex negative 7, 11. Okay, let's try the last type of example where we're given the transformations and we have to figure out our equation. So for this first one, the parabola opens down. That means we have a reflection over the x-axis and it's been vertically compressed by a factor of a half. Then it shifts up five and left three. So when we write our equation, let's start off with the a value. I know that it opens down, so I need a negative, and it was vertically compressed by a half. Then I'll go to my bracket that's squared. I do have a right-left movement, and it's left three units, which means I should write x plus three, so that it means I'm going to the left. And then I'm going up five, so that's outside my brackets. Okay, let's go to the next one. The parabola has been vertically stretched by a factor of three. 
it shifts right 12 and up 8 units. So pause the video and try to write the equation and then come back to check. Okay, so vertically stretched means our A value should be 3. I'm going to the right 12, so x minus 12 squared, and then up 8 means plus 8. And last one, the parabola opens up, so there's no reflection. The vertex is located at negative 8, 3, so they gave us the h and k value. And then it says that parabola has been vertically compressed. So that gives you freedom. Just make sure your a value is between 0 and 1, and you can choose whatever you want. So let's say y equals, I'm just going to say a half. And if my vertex is at negative 8, I should write x plus 8 because that means we're moving to the left 8. And then up 3, so plus 3. And there it is. Whether I give you the equation and you state the transformations in proper form, or I give you the transformations and you give me the equation, everything comes from vertex form. And just remember that good, proper terminology and communication.